Charla here again. How are you? Right, now we're going to have a little look at uh, creating some three-dimensional looking rocks in the water and on the beach. So this was obviously the uh, example I did when we were first what we we're looking at. Easy palette knife sky, nice smooth cloud look and how to do water with a brush. So we're going to add a few little rocks in there. Now what I've done as a first coat is to create the shapes of the rocks of where I want them in that middle tone. So you always want to be looking at the, the object that you're doing and thinking about that three tone, the simplicity of three tones, where you've got your, your lightest tones, your darkest tones, the shadows, and then your middle tone, your base tone. So these rocks are going to, they're slightly pinky brown, and I'm going to now add in some highlights and some shadows. So what I would suggest you do is you would draw out where you want your rocks to go. And if you need to, if you have shapes which are joining together like this, if you have a little bit of difficulty seeing which shape is where, of course, just use the pencil to draw in the individual shapes over the top. Now, just a little reminder then of how to proceed. So we're using the very simple palette of primary colours in white that we have in all the classes. And I'm going to start by creating the shading around these. Now you've also got to think about the texture of the, the objects and that it's the shadows and the light which are going to be really describing the texture to anybody who's looking at the painting. So you'll probably be working from a photograph. So have a little look at the, the shapes of the shadows and say to yourself, even if you're asking yourself the question, well, what do they look like? Do they have, do the shadows have smooth edges? Are they quite dotty? Is it a very textured, sort of pumicey, rough kind of rock, or is it really, really smooth? So I'm going to do a couple of different variations to, to show you. So as always, start with your, your middle tone. So my middle tone here with the brown is an orange. And then I'm going to add in a little bit of blue which was going to straight away create a really, really good dark brown. Now always create a, an extra, create, create little circles like this, mixing on the side of your uh, paint color. So you're not completely changing one color, but also so you can see how the colors progress and, and vary. Now this purple here looks way too blue compared to that brown. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of yellow into it and you know what it's like, sometimes you'll add too much yellow and it will look quite greeny. So then you need to offset with a little bit of red. So you see how dark that color is now compared to this one. So I want to make sure I've got really, really dark shadows to create fabulous sculpture around these. Now these ones here I'm going to say are going to be quite sort of dotty and the rough textured. And the ones in the water are going to be nice and smooth. And always when you're mixing up a colour of paint and you're painting some similar objects, try and unify the, the, the shading, the colours over your whole painting at once. So you're, uh, it might mean that you have to keep remixing the colour, of course you will, but it just keeps consistency and you're not getting one dark brown here and a totally different dark brown over there. So I'm going to start by uh, thinking about where the light is coming from. So it's just a general sunny day, so let's say the sun is above, so all of the shadows are going to be around the outsides. So if the sun is hitting the top of this rock, so first of all I want to create an outside edge, and of course the, the base is going to be really dark as well. Now I'm not using a photograph for these, I'm, I'm making these up, but you might well have a photograph that you're working from, and then just really, really look at the shapes of these shadows. Now the key with all shading is the point where the light meets the dark. Okay, now I know that I say that in a lot of my classes, but you just, you can't hear it enough. This point here. So if I make this as a very smooth line, then that instantly tells your brain because of this smooth transition between the shadow and the lighter area, it must be uh, a sharp, edge or quite a smooth line there. But if I change the edge, if I make some little dotty marks, you see how straight away we understand, well, that must be a textured 
rock because each of these shadows are being created by little pits in the surface, changes of, of direction. Now, just in, to demonstrate this and by, as I've been chatting, my shadow has, has grown and grown and grown, but we can always bring the light back in. So I'm going to keep a consistent lighting source, of course, that's really important in your painting. And for these, I'm also doing, doing the dots. So what I'm doing here, creating an edge where the shadow is, and then just using little dotty motions. The most important thing is that you don't make everything look exactly the same because they are natural objects. So there's going to be a little bit of variation in, in the surface. So even just, just doing that straight away, they look like they're three-dimensional objects because you've created shadow and grounding on them as well. Now over here in the water, I'm going to do the same thing, but these ones are going to be smooth. So let's create some, some smooth transitions so they're not nearly as, as um, dotty textured. And we will look at what the water does against these shortly. So I'm not thinking at the moment about the reflections in the water. I'm just working on the structure of the rocks. And you need to figure out what is in front, what is behind. So maybe there's a little dip in that one. So they, you want to look really closely at your reference material or think, even if you have need to make yourself a little model of a, a shape of a rock out of blue tack or something like that, and just look at, at what the light does on, on an object. Okay, so just very, very simple way to start and already we're getting some fantastic structure. Now I want to build in a little bit more of this mid-tone because I think I've taken the, the really dark shadows slightly too far. And that's a really helpful thing for me to say. You just never worry if you put too much paint on or if you take it too far. Acrylic is just amazing because you can just paint over everything. Paint over it. Now I'm starting again. Start with your, your base color. It's always really helpful just to have a base color that you can you can dip into. Now the, the dark color brown that was already on my brush is changing the tone quite considerably. Now that mid color, I had some white in it. So I just need to add a little bit, bit of white and that has very, very, very quickly taken us back to the original color. Another massive advantage of just using really limited primary paints Okay, I'm just going to add a little bit more white into it so it's going to go slightly further and bringing the dots back in because remember the edge here that's really important this is describing the texture of the object as I said before and maybe there would just be perhaps there's a little bit more of the rock sticking out here and because the the shadow color is still wet I'm getting a nice little blend, an additional blend of tones there between the light and the dark. See how three-dimensional that starts to look already just with those two tones. I'm just going back over the edges of all of these, literally dabbing, dab, 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 with the brush, with that paint, just softening that edge. And they, I mean, they're amazingly standing out already but we're going to add in some light because you always want to push the light. You know, I can hear all my students saying, we know. Right, coming back over this one. Now these are going to be slightly uh, softer lines. So just maybe evening up, getting, bringing back a little bit of light. Perhaps the light would come down further on here and just getting that slightly smoother transition. This is exactly the same, has the same effect as I demonstrated in the, the grasses video, when you're doing the blending of the larger flax leaves or grasses and using the wet paint that's on the canvas to get your the mix of colors that you want, rather than mixing them on your palette and then running out or it dries up, just take your time because this 
this paint isn't drying even though with it with a thin layer and there's nothing there's nothing which is holding it I haven't mixed any medium into it it's just taking your time and having knowing your your three tones in advance and being able to then just add in the paint in your own time just to get those those shadows and highlights while you're mixing in with the wet layers now to get my next brightest layer I can add white into the side of this now for any color which starts with with an orange tone anything which has warmth in it so this has obviously the orange has a lot of yellow in it if I just add white it's going to get quite misty looking quite a cold color so in that case add some yellow in now just start with the yellow on the side so you can see the difference between the two and what I want you see is that lovely sunny warm color and it's really helpful when you do transitions like this on your palette because you can see the change and that looks too pinky and kind of cold for the the rocks that I want but maybe this one's way too yellow so I'm adding a bit more light in remember that acrylic dries slightly darker so you can never have too much light in your paintings always put on more than you think you need because it will make the the objects look so three-dimensional now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start with a little bit of that pinky on there to create a slightly wet layer so just adding a little bit of that pink over the top because this is where the rocks would be the brightest because the sun's coming from above and now I'm going to add in a bit of our lovely bright tone just a bit I don't want it to completely melt into the sand however you have to trust that somebody looking at the painting somebody else's eye will understand when they see the edges of the rock here and the edge there they will understand the shape of the rock they'll be able to put the pieces together and it won't just vanish against the the, the sand and in fact some rocks if you have a photograph and if they are in fact made from the same stuff as the sand then you'll find that often they do look like they're they're blending in they'll just be the the shadow underneath you see how that looks far more three-dimensional than the other three so i'm going to start again just with that pink that darker light tone adding a little bit of that just to the tops of these adding a little bit and then a bit of our creamy yellow brown light colour over the tops. Remember to vary the shape. You don't want to have them all looking like they've come off a production line. I'm thinking about the little natural variation on where the light would be hitting. That's really important to have consistent light through throughout the painting. So now we have some very three-dimensional looking objects and yes of course you can go back in with your darker colours if you find you put on too much light. Now let's just add some brightness to these. Now you, if you want to, you can put it on quite thickly. And another way to get a good blend, if you don't have a wet colour underneath, of course, just use your finger. Just smudge it down. Really, really great way to soften an edge or just a little bit of very light dry-esque blending which just means that you're pressing very lightly and across here of course that would be very if the light's coming from above it'd be very bright up there now, i want to make sure that the edges of these objects are nice and crisp because these rocks are very uh, different shape and feel to these ones down here where they've got the the textured look now I think that we could have a bit more light in there. So let's get a bit more of the, the white, the white bright. Because I know that when that darkens, when it dries, it's going to darken quite a lot. And I want to have some really shiny areas of rock here and it just makes them pop out even more. And just a little bit of soft smudging down there. So you see how now we straight away 
well, not straight away, just a few layers, really, really quick, easy three-dimensional objects. And obviously you can scale these up if you want to have islands or um, cliffs coming in from the side, or even if you're looking at uh, hills in the distance, it's, it's the same, same process. You'll start with your middle tone, add your shadows, add your light, and just always think about where the light is coming from, making sure the light is consistent. Now, the ones on the sand, we want to make sure that we've created shadows on the sand. So you're thinking about the color of the, the, the surface that is becoming darker rather than the, the object that is creating the shadow. So the, the light uh, peachy tone, when that is made darker, so if I start with the light peachy tone again, which has that orange base, starting with the light peachy base, now to make that darker, yep, you add in a little bit of blue. Now, of course, because of the yellow that's in the peach, you're going to get quite a greeny tone. So then offset that with a bit of red. And if it goes too red, add a little bit of blue. If it goes too green, add a bit of red again. So just that little bit of back and forth. So now I've got a lovely warm, pinky, pinky gray color there which is going to be just perfect underneath here. And I'm doing a little bit of soft, sketchy stroking. I'm thinking about where the light's coming from, from above. Now it might not be creating huge shadows because these objects aren't that big, but I want to make sure that there's just a little bit of variation in the sand. And that just, just smudge it slightly with your finger if you want to. Now, a bit on this side. Has anybody noticed my deliberate mistake on, mistake on this one? But if the sun is coming from above, there wouldn't be nearly as big a tail on the rock. So what I need to do is just to see how they suddenly now sitting down on the sand. Now this, I just need to alter that and I can even just get a little bit of, on my finger, with a very, very light peach tone. Of course, you get a brush if you want to. I quite like having any excuse. A bit of finger painting. Just go over, go over like that. Doesn't matter if you're using a variety of, of tones, just to mix in. Might need to use a few different fingers so they don't just get to keep replenishing. It's the colour that's on your on your finger. Okay, that's better. So that's much more realistic. Now, oh, my fingers are covered in paint. Now I want to work out what's happening over here. Now you might have some uh, rock that's visible through the water. Now you want to again think about it's the colour of the the surface that the object is on or in. If it's uh, translucent like the water is rather than the, the object itself so creating a shaded version of that blue I would start with it's quite got quite a lot of yellow in I can remember doing that sample so just adding a little bit of additional blue into that aqua that ultramarine color just a touch of red just to darken it slightly now the the water might suddenly start to look really, really dark around this area. But we're gonna add a bit of splash of uh, foam. Now, you need to think about the surface that the object is on or in all the time to explain what's happening with the shape of your shadow. So these shadows here, because they're through the water, I'm going to do them in little stripes like that. It's not a solid patch like it is on the sand. They're sort of refraction of light and, and different kinds of the, the, you would see the shape through the water in quite a, quite a different way. Okay, so that already explains to anybody looking at it that it's, you know, that the, if the, the reflection or the shadow or the object seen through the water is broken up like that, it must be because the surface is broken up. So having those lines going through 
the, the middle of the reflection and the shadow, it works really, really well to explain that to anybody looking at it. So adding some white, touch of yellow in there to keep our aqua tone. I want to get a nice bright color back in. Lots more white in there. We can see my, the drippy yellow coming to say hello. And just come back in with some, now because the, the dark color is still wet, it's going to blend really nicely. We don't want it to look like perfect stripes though. So you might find there's just a little bit of going back and forth just to blend in some of those shapes. And you see how that is now coming out beautifully. That again, that shadow, I did the same over here, didn't I? I extended it way beyond the object. So let's just bring a little bit of light back in there. A bit of light, at least I'm, at least I'm consistent with my, my light errors. And we can definitely see that there's something going on there, maybe underneath the water as well. A little bit of extra dark there. Now, just to finish off those bits, because this is also uh, where the water, of course the water is coming in and coming around them. So think about just around the edges, you might change the shape slightly. So you know how you get that little sort of curve where the water has to move around an object. So maybe you put in a few little curvy zigzags, which just explain that the water is going around that object. It's not completely just flush, flat ripples. There we go, that looks better, doesn't it? That curvy zigzag, always thinking about the flat surface of the water. Right, and now we're just gonna add a bit of pure white, just where it might be just catching the waves, it might just be catching on the edge. There, so you might have to go back in with a few layers of this because of course it's going to mix with the wet paint underneath and darken because the blue is so strong a pigment just a little bit of foamy splash just hitting there perhaps just coming around the side coming around the side here perhaps it'll just be a tiny bit there with the water going in between those those rocks and I can just add in a little bit of finger smudge just around the side. Okay, so you see, very, very easy way to create three-dimensional objects with three stages, three tones, and thinking about the shadows, think about the surface that the object is on or in, and that is what is creating the dark shape rather than the color of the object made darker. All right, well, that's been a lot of fun to do. Now it's your turn, have some fun. See ya.